Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here with Chris Ruby uh, with the Devil Wears Prada. We're Hello. gonna talk about some guitars and uh, pedal chain, all kinds of fun, dorky <laughs> awesomeness, man. Gear stuff. <laughs> Gear stuff, man. Yeah, so uh, let's talk guitars first since we're right here. All right. What's your, uh, what's your number one? Well, I, I have a most played and I have a favorite, so we'll start with the most okay. played, I suppose. It's just, this is an Ibanez RG. Uh, we kind of went in and did some additional weathering to it. Uh, a little relic. Though must, most of it is now all accidental anyway. So uh, yeah, I really like this one. I have it tuned in drop B and... Uh, drop B. So are you using different gauge strings for different tunings or pretty much the same? Gauge? Yes, but because of that, I don't know exactly what gauges I use on all of them. What's, what's the heaviest that we use? Well, your A is a custom What's the lowest? 60. Okay, 60. so yeah, this... That guy right there is a 60. So gotcha. this is probably just a little bit lighter because this is drop A. But yeah, uh, EMG pickups. We believe this is an 85. Uh, <laughs> Looks like an older yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really thin necks on these guys. And yeah, this is my main one. It's really light, easy to play. One knob, volume only. No tone hey. knob, one pickup. No pickup selector. It's Super hard to mess up. Yeah, idiot proofed is what we call it. <laughs> but yeah, and then this. Uh, Ivan has actually made me, it's kind of like a pair, two customs. Oh cool, yeah, let's show the camera, yeah, I'll hold so. on this for you. Wow, that's way cool. They got, got some the, weight to them too. Yeah, right? these are a lot heavier, um, they're a lot more headstock heavy, but this is the ARZ model. And uh, yeah, they got matte black on the back, they kind of match. Very cool. This one, yeah. is, uh, this one is mahogany, this one's swamp ash. Very cool. And that is actually a brand that they had to make. And he said everyone was like wincing when they did it just because they get one they, try. They get one try, it. man. <laughs> oh, How much fine. do you feel you can feel, like tell the difference between the woods? Um, it's more of just like, well, this one is tuned vastly higher. Okay, like this so one is yeah. pretty much standard, just drop D with one string detuned. But this one is all the way as low as we go in drop A, which is, you know, pretty much stand, like seven string tuning almost. But uh, bass string on there. <laughs> yeah, th this one's really resonant. The these guitars are more resonant than, say, this body style, but this one's a lot easier to throw around and kind of sure. like handle and stuff. But yeah, they have the same thin necks, maple fret boards. I like that. scoop, man. That's 24 cool. frets. Uh, yeah. Locking tuners. There's Ibanez locking tuners. Yeah, yeah. Cool, they, cool. they like cut the strings for you and everything. Uh, like when you tune them up, they just kind of like nip it off right there and everything. Really easy. Super fun, right? What other well, guitars we got going on? Just a uh, backup, you know, this is just a ARZ that I have done some surgery on so I can't <laughs> hit the switches, toggles, that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, this one I think is like, a, I don't know if this is a production like paint job that you can necessarily buy, which is cool because that they just kind of cool. sent it to me uh, for a backup, but yeah. 81, 85? Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much what I rock in all my guitars. Yep. Um, Keep it simple, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of mentality. I get that. And then this one's the exact same thing, it's just got purple paint on it. Just a little backup. Yep, another backup. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, this is, we just uh, filled in the handle grip right here, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's rad. I cool. like those. Super cool. Well, since we're over here, um, I guess we could probably switch over to amps real quick. All right. All right, so, man, I'm, I've always been a huge fan of the, uh, you know, 5150s and 6505s, yeah. it's just a great metal tone, man. It's hard to beat. I guess you feel the same way. You got two of them, huh? Yeah, these are, uh, they have EL34s in them, so they're 6534s, you know, oh. pretty much the same thing. Uh, same. No kidding. Uh, type of sound, just a little bit more of like a crunch than a sear, I like to say, sure, like versus more. the 6505. Uh, um, yeah, I feel like 34s yeah. always have a more vintage metal tone it or just, something. It's, yeah, it just fits with uh, what our other guitars plays a little bit more. I, I don't know. It, I was just testing them out and it sounded good, so. So is this a backup? Uh, yeah, we I gotcha. just run one of them at a time. Just one at a time, cool. Yeah, just in case, because uh, they do every now and then mess up, so. Of course, it's got tubes, man. It's yeah. to be expected from time to time. Playing them every single day. Very cool. And, and then, then um, up here, yeah, these are just the uh, wireless units. We have three different tunings, B, D, and A. And uh, these are just separate receivers, so we can just flip between them and not have to like turn packs on and off. Gotcha. So just, Bam, bam. So do you have a guitar for each tuning? And I do, a Separate yes. pack on each. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really handy. Wow. Makes it easy for me. Cool. And then, is this yeah. your orange over here? Yeah, over here, uh, it's orange. It's a TH30. It's basically like, sounds like a rock -a verb almost. Like, I just use it a little bit overdriven. Uh, for, for your 
pedals or just for it's clean for tone? Uh, just the clean tone. I just A B between them uh, so I can get separate like delay trails and stuff on my dirty and clean. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to have a separate speaker preamp combo than you know the PV and the Mesa combo for the heavy. So. Sure. So you guys are this is what you're playing over here these Mesas? Yep, just standard. Standard. Uh, what uh, what speakers do you have in them? Do you know? Uh, vintage vintage 30s. 30s. Yes. Yeah. Tried and true, man. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's, I feel like uh, it's just about as I say as simple as it gets, but it's that's just because that's what every metal guitarist uses. I'm not really trying to like try new stuff. I just like how it sounds. Sure. So, tried yeah, and true. Totally get that. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, let's talk pedals for a second. And cool. Cool. All right. So we're coming out of. The 6534s, is that what they're called? Uh, yes. Okay, out of the 6534s, into, over... Into here, this is all preamps, so... Gotcha. Well, some of it is. Uh, I'll start at the beginning. Uh, okay. Into the tuner from the guitar wirelesses. So, uh, you know, standard, you got your Boss chromatic tuner, just tuned to any note. Um, and then in my effects loop, I have the reverb for my dirty signal, which is this holy grail. Cool, and you've got it just kind of locked down here. Yeah, right? this one, I really, really hit the knobs with my foot when I'm going to hit this, so I just have to tape them down. Uh, and then in the effects loop as well, we have a noise suppressor, which uh, cuts the hum. Sure. And then this noise suppressor is in the chain, and it uh, is for like the actual guitar strings and all that. And uh, so I boost the signal with an Ibanez uh, tube screamer, just gives it a little bit of dirt. Is that modded or anything, or just totally original? Uh, yeah, it's just a normal, not even like a, I think some of the older tube screamers are more sought after for their tone. This is just a normal play, the, guitar Yeah, the four knob ones. ones, right? Yeah, yeah, you can change. See, I got some, that's some, what this is to get rid of. That's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> gotcha. But anyways, uh, so this right here is my Electro harmonics like the mini pog, it just has the up and down octaves and then the dry. And this is actually an external controller for that because this is really microphonic. Like you heard me just make that noise where I was hitting it. Like basically, anytime I would turn this on or off, it would do that really loud. So this just is a switch for this. Gotcha. And then you got, you know, Boss Tremolo just for the wiggity wiggities and TR2, stuff. that's yeah, standard. That real, great. real simple, everything jacked all the way up. So it's really just. Uh, it just crazy a stroby sound, right. I guess, or whatever. And then, so yeah, this is just my tap tempo switch for uh, the giga delay over here. I use all the presets and stuff, and then I have to tap out some delays for songs that are not uh, high priority enough to make it to the pre the four presets. The preset, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> and then uh, this is uh, you got the Digitech whammy for the dive bombs and the super squealy stuff. The squealy stuff, all the yeah, I just fun noises. Two, uh, the two octaves up and the two octaves down, just for keep it simple, tape all the other lights off. That's pretty much what everything is, just taped off so I can't accidentally touch anything during the set. <laughs> Very cool, man. Apparently, I ha lack precision. So. <laughs> Other than that, I just have my AB switch, Morley AB switch. Uh, Between the orange and the Yes, and the for my clean tone and d dirty tone. So like, say I'm playing a clean part that's just coated in delay and I don't want to wait for the trails to go away before I switch over to dirty. That's why I use the AB versus um, just, you know, switching, switching channels on right. the head. So, sure. Seems simple to me. Hey, so. man, you can do it with your foot. Why yeah, not? <laughs> exactly. Okay, now we're talking to Mike Renica, and Mike is going to give us the uh, the lowdown on what's going on over here. And so, I guess we'll talk guitars first because this is the only one you got with you, right? Sure. Yeah. I only uh, I don't play too much on uh, the Prada set, so there's no need in bringing a lot of guitars. Um, I've used this guy a few times with Prada. Um, this is my second uh, custom from First Act. Um, the first one didn't turn out very well, to be honest, but I love this one. Um, basically, just, you know, sort of jazz master body. Sure. Um, you know, just the, the bridge pickup and uh, just volume. This is a uh, Gibson 498T, which have always treated me really well. B um, other guitars I've played with Prada is, uh, I have an 88 Les Paul Custom, which is why I, I fell in love with the 498. And then I have an EGC, the uh, an acrylic with aluminum neck, which is just crazy, but... It's so heavy, it's just a backbreaker. So. Yeah. And tuning is kind of weird with it, and it's a, a little temperamental. But this guy works really well for Prada. Very simple. Um, Do they make that custom for you? or? Yeah, yeah. Cool. The, the first one, um, kind of close to this, more of like a, a telly uh, body. Jeremy and Andy both play custom first acts as well, so you can 
check those out cool. in a minute as well. But yeah, love this guy. Very, very cool. And so I guess that just brings us over to your pedal board here. Yes, sir. Cool. Um, I have a bad habit of uh, switching things up rather frequently, um, but I'm feeling pretty good where I'm at right now. I, I recently switched out my uh, memory man with Hazard Eye for that ditto. That's tiny. A looper, yeah. Very it's cool. awesome and super easy and takes up little room. Um, what else? Yeah, just a bunch of stuff that honestly I don't really <laughs> even use for, for Prada. Um, this guy, I don't even know how to say the brand name. It's R-E-U-S-S. -S. They're from, I believe, Denmark. I just got it, but I use that as kind of like my little like uh, preamp gain boost for clean stuff. And then the OC Demon right there is uh, Fuzz Rocious. Um, basically modeled after like an OCD, but a little more grind, a little more, uh, a little, little more character in zip. my opinion. Sure. And I use that for my uh, my dirty stuff, and it's got a feedback feedback toggle, which is just the stupidest thing ever, and super awesome. So, so. will it make some crazy squeals? Like if you yeah. if you wanted to, yeah. Oh. Very cool. Indeed, the stupidest thing ever, but that's what I like. Yeah, that's very very cool. Right on. And so then out of, the, out of the, what do they call that? That's the uh, OC Demon. The OC Demon, I love. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I really like the stuff Fuzz Rocious is doing. They're actually building me a custom pedal right now, which is a fuzz with an octave up on it. So that's going to cool. be Very cool. That'll gnarly. be fun noise to play yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and so coming out of that, you're going into the Earthquaker Hoof? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, they do a number of uh, fuzzes. I went with that one. Um, it's cool. I'm all, I'm all about it just for... Uh, Jamming around at home, um, stoner type stuff. Big it's time. Did you, uh, and it, it sounds good for bass as well. Translates oh, okay. well. Did you try like other fuzzes? Like, did you do a little shootout, or you just? I mean, not not too much actually. I mean, like I had the uh, the big muff when I was a kid, sure. and it treated me horribly. Yeah, I did I'm not really... like that guy. Um, but yeah, I, I was looking for a while. I heard a lot of good things about Earthquaker, so I gave that a shot. A little um, more modern fuzz for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like the stuff they're doing. They do some weird pedals, like a, uh, our guitar tech Kyle knows a lot about them, but like a rainbow machine and just these things that it's like, I don't even know what Yeah, Earthquake is set up at NAMM. They were crazy. They had yeah. so many fun pedals to play with, man. So then out of, out, of, out of the hoof, you're going into this Empress? Yeah, I run, uh, basically I run all of my uh, distortion pedals first before running into the delays. Um, I use that Empress. Uh, when did I get it? Yeah, right before 818, so like October or something. Um, I really, I really would like to try that uh, the new analog tap delay from uh, JHS. It's like blue. It's like the Blue Panther or something. Yeah, I th yeah, I saw, I saw an ad for it. Though. I would like, I would like to give that a go. But this, uh, this work, working pretty well. I use that for like primary delay, seeing as I can tap it out, and then I'll use the the MXR carbon copy on top of it with the reverb and it gets just Real. really like atmospheric cool. yeah. type sounds. I love that stuff. That's fun to play with. So do you ever just go ham and turn all these on at once? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. I do, uh, back home, I have like my, gu my guitar rig, I have a bass rig, and then I have my Moog. So it's, it's fun to do Moog through the pedal board and just do the stupidest, absurd things. Are you running the Moog through the pedal board right now as well? No, oh, unfortunately not. That is cool. That'd that be, would be, be awesome. awesome though, yeah. Cool. What is this little... Honey dripping looking thing. The honeycomb, JHS honeycomb, huh? Yeah, is it's it a uh, just a dual tremolo, um, two different speeds. Um, I think it's got a great sound. Uh, Earthquaker does a tremolo I was really close to doing, um, but I went with that one. That one felt a little more organic. Um, so yeah, but that, that's not something I use too often, but it's cool to be on there and put on some uh, clean parts that give it a little extra taste, a little more flavor, I guess. A little vibe for sure. And then the B3K, is I only use that for bass, but I have all my pedals on the same board. But gotcha. for bass back home through uh, my bass rig, that gives it just a tiny bit of color and it's perfect. I and really you're not love playing it with this stuff though, right? No, no, not cool. for a guitar. What's the story on the noise clamp? Uh, I've run it about uh, three o'clock, so about 75%, I guess. Um, I hate noise compressors. When I'm home, it's just noisy and messy and I love it that way, but playing with this band and keep trying to keep right. it a little more tight and a little less raw. I run that, but it does a it does a good job, and I think I'm I'm still getting plenty enough signal. All right. So last, I guess, in the chain is the the foot switch for your Varelin. Correct. This is the uh, it's basically just the the toggle for the uh, the super channel on the Varelin Skyhammer, um, which is actually what I've been using 
since playing live with this band. And now I actually don't use it. I, I get plenty enough out of the Fuzzerocious. And the issue I have with the, the Super Channel is it gets real noisy, real noisy. So you have to watch where you're walking. And yeah, it's, it's so hard. I kind of, um, I think that the, I think the, the head sounds excellent with just using the, the Fuzzerocious. Out of this, it's going into your head, which is kind of tricky to see right now because I know it's kind of hidden back there in the rack. And we'll try to get a still image for you guys to see all the settings and stuff. But um, the head is running into this cab on stage. Correct, yeah. I'm oh. playing a Varel and Skyhammer right now, which is pretty much like a, a 800 type model amp. Um, I got it uh, two, three years ago and I love it. Since then, I've bought uh, two other Varelans. I just got a Varelan Co-op, which is like a clean Fender sound. And then my bass rig back home is a uh, Varelan meat smoke through a Varelan cab. Very cool. So, and Ben Varelan's an awesome dude. Um, and I really, really love his amp, so. Yeah, I've heard I, nothing but good I, things, yeah, for sure. I praise the, the sky hammer and such highly. <laughs> and then the cab is, uh, I actually just got it about two weeks ago. It's a company called Janus out of uh, Valparaiso, Indiana. A buddy of mine works, uh, is one of the dudes there. Uh, small operation. Um, but I love that thing. I was playing just the Orange 412 for a long time, and I wanted to mix it up a little bit, so what, um, uh, what's, they built it for me. Is it a 412? It's a 412, but they do the offset speakers. Oh, I was going to say, because it looks a little tall for it a 412. It is, it is, yeah. Cool. It's cool, though. I, I, so far, so good. Um, I'm running, uh, we're micing the wizard, the wizards in these two. Oh, and you got then, split configuration. Right, cool. and then uh, Man of Wars. I was going to do wizards and governors, but uh, I th they were kind of like, I think that's going to be too mid-rangey, so we did the uh, Man Awards instead. And they said they'd swap it if I don't like it. I'm still kind of making up my mind, but generally, so I, far, I so love, good. yeah, I think it's an awesome cab. Very cool, man. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to, to talk to us. Absolutely. Um, and we're going to you know, talk to everybody else in your band, but I hope you have a great show. I'll and, try. Yeah, <laughs> put it there, man. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys, we're here with Jeremy DePoister, and he's going to talk about his guitars and amps and stuff now. So, um, what's your number one? Let's start there, because it looks like you okay. got a lot going on. Yeah, um, it, well, most of them are backups. Um, this guy is a, I think it's the classic player jazz master. I don't know, it's Mexican made, because they didn't want to buy a nice one and chop it up. So we took, <laughs> a, um, we took the original pickup out, the jazz master down here, put a Seymour Duncan JB in there. All these guitars have JBs in them. That's, so that's your pickup? The main, yeah. Cool. It, like, th they all have their own sound, but across the board, it's easier to run with the whole rig if you're using the same pickup through everything, at least for what we sure. do. Sure, that so, makes sense. Um, these are just taped so they don't move. Um, and then uh, we put a um, tunematic bridge on here instead, too, because the other one was like a... Um, tremolo bridge and it just got out of tune way yeah, too fast. Yeah, it's hard to tune sometimes. So, and I don't have any cool tremolo parts, so th cool. that's this guy. Do you ever play cool. on this pickup at all? Or? Um, okay, in the studio and stuff like that, but not really live. Gotcha. Like, so it that's, doesn't that's why you just have it taped off, so you can't... Yeah, because uh, I just bump back and forth. I actually used to use this as a kill switch because I played Les Pauls for a long time and I would just kill switch like with the other pickup off, but then I started bumping it way too much. So <laughs> I like how I love how all of you guys just have it taped down. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Sort of well, our uh, our uh, other guitar tech and our sound guy were like, just get on a knob. Like everyone in the world uses a knob to turn off their volume. Just learn. And so I was like, fine, okay. <laughs> so I did that maybe a year ago. So that's this guy, Jazz Master. And I have a. Another Jazz Master, same thing. Got it down and put that in. Identical in setup, bridge, right? right? Yeah. So this is just a backup for that guy. Gotcha. Um, then we have a first set custom. Um, I really love Les Paul customs. I have one right over there too. So that's like, um, I really just like the offset bodies and Les Pauls. And so I wanted double bound because I like the customs. Um, yeah, cool. And then uh, it's got, you know, three and three headstock. Um, this is them. ebony fretboard um, because, like I said, the custom, this is just a mock of a custom. And then um, this pickup doesn't work right now. Um, so that's tape to JB again, uh, tunematic. And then, um, so yeah. That guy's pretty cool. Very cool. Um, so is that just a backup for? for no, this. A, well, I kind of flip flop these two. These ones are both in A tuning, so 
like drop A. So I'll just flip flop either night. Um, just out of curiosity, how is how heavy it is it, yeah, com you can com feel it compared? Actually, it's got way more weight than I expected. Yeah, these are way heavier than the Jazzmasters too. So oh, way heavier. There, I think the ebony maybe has something to do with it, and then just um, being mahogany and everything. Yeah, like mahogany that. So, body for sure. Um, this is a Les Paul custom. I think it's a 2002. Um, Again, you switched out the pickup. Yep, over switched the... that out, taped that guy. This does still work. I just never it's use not like it. You're using it. Yeah, copy that. Um, for all the clean stuff, we just go to um, a combo. So. Okay, so. so got the Mustang here, uh, flipped the tailpiece because that was again a floating or moving one, so I don't tremolo and that was getting out of tune all the time. Put a tunematic on there, we just kind of hammered it in, and then this one actually is just, all these JBs on all the fenders are actually screwed into the body of the guitar because they don't fit in the case. Right. Um, and then this guy still works, a little um, single coil, but I just don't really use it. It's too noisy for life. Taped stuff off. For my amp. Sure. Taped off again. So this one's for drop D. So they're all labeled right there for what tuning it is. Because if your guitar tech is an idiot, fortunately mine's not. But if they were, then they could just go, oh, okay, and look at that. Um, cool. So, so yeah, they, uh, usually I'll just use one, two, and three during the show, and then maybe one, two, and three on another show. But usually just only three, only change for the tunings. Um, but yeah. Gotcha, cool. And so, all right, well, let's talk about um, some amps here. So you are playing some Rock of Herbs. Yep. Very cool amp. It's um, nice, uh, the Orange guys are awesome, um, and then they hook us up whenever we do overseas stuff. That's always such a problem. Um, traveling overseas, because you can't fly with your own gear if you're not as big of a band like us. So uh, they usually hook me up with like identical setup overseas too, so I'll have my same amps and cabs uh, pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, Got two rock and verbs. This is the main one that lives down here with the base one, and then this is a backup. So uh, if anything happens, we just flip plugs right away and keep going. Um, so I guess we have, uh, I just keep the reverb off. I don't know why it's on right now for some reason. <laughs> you never uh, use verb at all? No, I use pedals for it. I used to use the reverb on this. I actually really like it. It sounds really good, but uh, with my switching system, it was too complicated to run it on off for it, so I just used one on the board. Gotcha. Um, very, very, very simple settings. I just have everything at like a two o'clock, um, and then uh, gain just kind of varies day by day. Usually it stays the same, but if it's too noisy, we'll back off the gain a little bit and just hit into it a little bit harder. And then just do everything else with pedals. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, and this thing just sounds good right out of the bat anyway, so that's kind of where it just landed day one of like, oh, this, let's add some treble, add some middle, add some bass, and it just sounded so good, I was like, fine, and then I'll run through on the pedals and stuff, but yeah, simple, it's easy, and it sounds good. Very and cool. And since we can't see them right here, I guess, you're playing orange cabs as well? Yeah. Cool, and then what speakers are, are, are they vintage 30s? Yeah, well? vintage 30s, just standard orange cabs. Like I said, that makes it easier just to travel and do stuff anywhere sure. and just be like we need this head and that cab and then it always works right so very cool all and right we well, also have right here um a uh it's a th30 combo so it's just a, a little clean combo that we run it I've, has a very similar sounding clean channel to this um but then it can live on its own in its own microphone to the in-ears and to the front of house um that has its own like pedal set running to it and uh is I it, just use that for all the clean stuff. That's just for clean stuff? Yeah. And just, um, I'll get a picture of it so the camera can see it, but okay. it looks like you've got a holy grail. Yep, so everything comes, uh, it comes off the board out of a delay into uh, Soul Preacher, compressor, that kind of just gets it like, I do a lot of swells and stuff on the clean stuff, so that lets those come through cleaner. Sure, so even it out. And um, the noise gate, because this thing's way too loud, and then uh, just a reverb. That These two are in the effects loop, so. Gotcha. Okay, these just are just wireless, so we had three wireless, one for each tuning, and then a switcher, so you can switch between them really quick. That's nice because when you're over here um, for the guitar tech, all you have to do is tune up the next one, and you can just hand off and hit A, and now you're playing an A on that guitar. Super easy. So you have packs for all your guitars? Yeah, every like guitar is on its own pack, and then even the backup. So if you have to go to a backup, you just flip over to another frequency, and the song doesn't have to stop or anything like that. Super cool. All right, so well, let's, really uh, let's take a look at some of your pedals. Cool. Cool. Well, oh, you have a lot going on over here, so I'm just going to let you get at it. Well, it looks complicated, but it's really not. So um, 
This is a switching system. It's a mower switching system. It's uh, I think it's Chinese made, but um, I used something else for a while, but this one had an extra loop and lets me do a little bit more and has a few amp controls and stuff. So um, basically the really simple chain is everything comes in and every single one of these patches has the OCD and the noise gate on it. Um, each one of these is on its own separate loop. I'm sure any gear nerds know about like a looping system and everything. So um, this switcher right here, it has different patches that you choose right here by clicking on and off these buttons. Um, and then that lets you, especially because I do a lot of singing, um, I can just click on something, sing the part, and then click it back off and not have to worry about tap dancing all over these things. So one loop is, like I said, the OCD and the noise gate. Um, that just adds a little bit more uh, crunch to the top of the orange so that it's more controllable and you can add more saturation but keep it tight in the noise gate. Sure. Um, and I have a small stone phaser that I use for a couple little parts and some of the zombie stuff that we Fun have. Noises. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, the memory boy, this is my main delay that I use just for um, all normal delay stuff. And it has a tap on it. Sure. Um, so it's analog delay, but has a tap. So that's nice. I just like the way the analog delays break up and you can play with them and get um, just funky noises yeah, and stuff. Fun stuff. Um, sure. Half of the delay patches, like this one, for example, have the whammy in it too. So I just use a whammy as either an octave down or an octave up. I also have a pog that I use um, that does an octave down and an octave up, but this one tracks really well. So that's kind of more of an organy, like it follows wherever the pitch goes perfectly. And this kind of oscillates itself a little bit because it doesn't, or modulates, sorry, itself a little bit because it doesn't track extremely accurately. So you get almost a chorusy kind of sound. So I'll use that for a lot of delays just because we only have two guitars on most of the songs to fatten them up a little bit with either an octave up or an octave down. Um, this chorus right now I'm not using very much. This is an entirely separate patch. So if you see right here, it says clean. If I hit that, it'll AB my signal out to first the chorus, this delay, and then go over to the clean amp. So that's the way I flip between all these dirty patches and then a clean. Um, so I have a Holy Grail reverb. That's on most of the delay patches. Um, I've noticed that you have that in your clean. Yeah, I just Monty. love that reverb. It sounds good. Like we used to use a bunch of different ones, and then one day Chris and I just went to a guitar store and plugged it in and we were like, well, that's it. We'll never use another this reverb. So that thing sounds amazing. Um, okay, so this right here, it's, uh, we do a lot of festivals and stuff overseas that you gotta change everything over really quick. So we like to have everything on a snake right here to where um, just like five cables come to the board, five cables go to the rig at the back. So Keep we can it run simple. it to the back. So sure. um, this is kind of just acting as a patch bay right now. As you can see, there's no settings on. Um, but the patch bays just break and uh, pedals don't. <laughs> so I just have this. this so right you're here. just using it to patch? Yep, 100%. So this comes in from the amp, this goes to the effects return. So basically, it's patched from some of these up to here, and then from some of those up to here. So all you do when you come to the board is plug in, plug in, plug in, plug in, and then you're good and done. Well, this one too, tuner. So plug yeah, so five cables not. and you're done. You don't have to get through here. I don't like stuff running all across the board because I can't see what the settings are and stuff. Sure, and this looks so. nice and clean too. Well, suit up. <laughs> it's, it's for as many pedals around. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and There's a lot of cables in there too. Uh, I also, I use this uh, OD3 in front of the clean amp. So that's kind of, it's, it's like a little bit of a bite and I turn the tone way down just so it's not very bright. And then, um, yeah. Cool, so more of like a, like a boost? Yeah, and it just dirties it up a little just bit. A little, so a little something, something. more saturated, the sweeter it sounds. I don't like clean cleans very much. Gotcha. This is a carbon copy. That's what I use for the uh, clean delays. So, like I said, this will flip out to there, through there, and go out to there. And then everything else on the board can be patched in. And actually, you can patch in any of these onto the clean stuff, but I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> cool. Well, man. Thank you so no, much for taking the time. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Very cool. This is Perry with Premiere signing off. Um, uh, check out our other rig rundowns and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube. Thanks a lot.